Welcome back, this is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks and in this video we are going to finish up talking about the course template pages. We've already gone through the customer center, the course home, the module lessons, and now we're going to come down here to the lesson page. And I saved this one for last because unlike the other three templates we had above here, this one doesn't have any kind of a collection. All the other ones had a collection of courses or of modules or of lessons. And in this case here, we don't have any of that. As you can see on your page, we got the standard layout we've had for all of them. Footer at the bottom, header at the top made out of universal sections. We had um, you know, some navigation and stuff. And then I put in this headline to designate what it was. We got a breadcrumb here. We have our lesson title. And again, where are you gonna find that lesson title? Let's go in here to add our elements. And we're going to come down to course. And now in the course, again, we're not looking at a course at this point. It's not a course. It's not a module. Where we are now is down here in the lessons. And so if we want to put in the name of this, we would put in this name element right there. We could put in a link, but why would you put in a link to the lesson when you're already in the lesson? You could put in the lesson image, which again, why would you do that? You're already in the lesson. And the audio and video, um, you could put those in because those are elements that you would actually be able to put in when you are creating the lesson yourself. And we'll see that in the next uh, videos coming up very soon here. And then again here, I said there wasn't a collection, but I mean, I guess there is a collection when you're at the module level, you can put in a collection, but there's no collection here because we don't have a collection inside of a lesson itself. This is a collection of lessons. So you could put in the video or the audio. Now this element right here, lesson body, I'm not even really sure what this element is because it's um, it may be deprecated. It may not even be an element anymore because if we come in here and let's just type in the words uh, body here. Let's see if we get, we got our content body, which is a dynamic slot, which we will talk about in a little bit here. We have, okay, let me, take the word body back out of there. We come down here to our dynamic slots and we have two of them. This one here is kind of useless. This one here is content body. And I've been told that later on, you'll probably find this element actually in with the course lesson elements, but nowhere else in here is this content body showing up anywhere. So I'm going to leave it in there for now. And if we recall, when we get to the lessons, we'll see if that does anything. And then here we have a lesson video. And again, what this is, is what we were seeing up here before when we go here to courses and we come all the way down to our lessons, that would be this video element right here. And again, this would be only for a video that you upload into ClickFunnels. You then associate it with this lesson when you're setting up the lesson. Then if you put in this element, it will play this video right here. If you want to play a video that you have hosted somewhere else, like on YouTube or Vimeo or wherever, you would use the normal video element that you'd find up here at the top of the page under general. Same thing here, we have an audio element under general, but under courses, under the lessons, we have... Did I go down too far? No, we have an audio here. And again, that will be a specific audio that you uploaded into ClickFunnels and then associated particularly with this lesson. That's when you would use that element right there. And so otherwise we have this, we have this button down here, which um, as of the recording of this, it does work as a go to the next lesson button, as you can see, but it doesn't actually mark anything as complete as far as I can tell. It doesn't store anything to a database, uh, assuming someday that it will be doing that. And so it'll be able to mark to show that somebody has completed this work and then they moved on to the next level. And hopefully at some point they'll put some sort of indications in here so the person can look at the lessons that they have completed and not completed and know which ones to go to to keep going. But in order to set this one up here, we uh, actually it says here um, on click, nothing happens. I don't know why I'm saying that because it says here the page action is mark complete. So let's come down here. So we would do this one right here. Mark complete is how that should be set right now. And then down here is the most important piece on the entire page. And this is what will be dynamically replaced 
when you set up your lesson. So we're going to see here in the next video, we're going to set up our modules and lessons and that kind of stuff. And when you go into your lesson, all this stuff up here, all the templated stuff is all going to be boilerplate. All of this will show in every single one of your lessons. So chances are, and we'll go into this in more detail in a couple of videos, chances are what you're going to want to do is pretty much rip everything out of here and throw it away. Because for the most part for me, when I'm building lessons in membership sites, I start with pretty much a blank lesson. I put in a headline, some video, maybe some text, and that's about it. So, and that video isn't necessarily going to be something I'm going to upload to ClickFunnels either. So, uh, like I said, I would probably just get do away with all this, the header and all that stuff for the most part may not be necessary. Maybe you want to link up here back to the, uh, ca uh, the customer center, uh, something like that. But the rest of this, uh, again... Uh, may or may not be necessary. You got your um, your breadcrumb here, but again, as we get into some other ways of setting this up, you're not going to even have the breadcrumbs in here. You may have the lesson title. Lesson title is always nice at the top of the page, uh, but that's about it. But this dynamically replaced part down here means that you could actually set up a lesson template with maybe a small header at the top. You don't need a footer unless you want some links somewhere. Um, but you have you know, a small header at the top and a dynamically replaced element here. They call it a second. This is your content body. And then what you can do is you can put anything in here you want. You, we can put in um, the, uh, what's the name of the element here? Let me find it real quick. Let's find the element here, course lessons, uh, course sidebar. We could drop a course sidebar in here if we wanted to for every uh, for every one of our lessons that we're building, or we could build a template where it had a two column row, let's say, and we had a the course sidebar over here on the left hand side, and then on the right hand side over here is where you actually put in the dynamic content. So on the right hand side over here, you could put in the lesson title and have it be dynamic like this. You could put in a video and have that be dynamic and some text underneath and have that be dynamic. And so there's a lot of different ways you can set this up. You just have to basically break out of the theme and template idea that they're kind of trying to box you into in here as far as I'm concerned. Somebody said to me the other day is the person who's going to get rich is the person who builds the first theme that's completely blank. And I said, yeah, exactly, because I'm going to do it first. I'm not going to get rich off of it, but um, that's what I'm going to do as soon as we have the ability to create our own themes. And I guess we really do now is I'm just going to strip everything out and just start with blank pages each time because that's really, for, in my mind, the simplest way. And I really think these themes and these templates are more confusing than they are anything else. But I'll get off my rant on that right now. But so this is going to come in real handy here. You're going to see now once we get into the lessons, that we can put anything in here we want, including you could just again have a, uh, a blank page with nothing but this content body element on it. And then you can create universal headers and drag those universal headers into this, into this box right here. You can create other sections, whether they're universal or not. You can grab those sections and drag it in here. You can drag any element that you want in here. So again, I like using those a lot better than I like using any kind of a set template, uh, maybe a slightly set template, and then the rest of it being dynamic, especially if you're working with blogs. You probably want each one of your blogs to stay pretty consistent looking. You want your lessons to stay pretty consistent looking. So what I'll probably end up doing in the long run is more or less creating a very simple frame with probably a navigation and then the rest of it's going to be dynamically replaced so I can put anything else in there that I want. So that is it for the lessons. I just wanted to show you how this works. Make sure you're aware of this element right there. And then we're going to move forward. And in the next, um, in the next video, we are going to start building out our actual course. So if you got any questions, just let me know.